my duties as a teacher. All day. Okay. All right. We, um, this should be review. Okay. Solving absolute value equations should be review. You should have done this in Algebra 1, but we're going to go over it real quick just to kind of refresh your memory. Okay. So, can anybody tell me what absolute value means? What the definition of absolute value is, Sid? Yes. The distance a number is away from zero. So if I want to know what numbers have a distance from zero that equals six, what would you say? Negative six. Six and negative six, right? Those two numbers are both six away from zero. So if I said um, the absolute value of x equals negative 6. Oh, that's false. You can't do that. Can't do that. Why? Because absolute values are always positive. Right. Because didn't you learn geometry distances have to be positive? Yeah. Right? A distance, doesn't matter which direction I'm standing away from you, the distance is always positive, right? Mm -hmm. If I walk a mile to the left and a mile to the right, my distance is still a mile, positive, okay? So your absolute value cannot be equal to a negative. What if I said, this is crazy sometimes, uh, the absolute value of x equals zero. Zero. Undefined. Zero is the only number that's zero units from itself, right? So when I have the absolute value equal to a positive, I get two answers, right? When I get absolute value equal to a negative, it's no solution. And then when absolute value is equal to zero, I get one answer, x equals zero. Okay? So we'll solve a, um, oh yeah, I got time. We'll solve a few real simple ones, and then we'll go into the more complicated ones. So first example, absolute value of x minus 3 equals 5. If I can cover this up, Let's see what happens. If I can cover this up and pretend it's not here, what two numbers would you put inside that absolute value? Two. Cover this up. No, no. Oh, right. Negative five and five. Negative five and five, right? Oh, yeah. If I cover this up, what is has an absolute value of five? Negative five. Five and negative five, right? Mm -hmm. So I can say that what's inside x minus three can equal 5, or x minus 3 can equal negative 5. That's all you do? You solve then I solve them, right? Because whatever's inside can equal positive 5 or negative 5, and they're both going to come out as 5, right? So then I add 3, and x is 8, and I add 3. And x is negative 2. And we're going to practice writing that or between our two answers. Because it can't be both at the same time. Right? If you pick one to plug in, you can't plug them both in. You have to plug in one and check it and then plug in the other. We have the absolute value of 3x plus 6 equals 12. 
So if we ignore this, what can it equal? Negative 12 and 12. So 3x plus 6 equals 12, or 3x plus 6 equals negative 12. Now you can solve them, right? I'll give you a chance to do that on your own. What did we get? Two and negative six. So x equals two or x equals negative six. Okay, everybody agree? Yeah? Okay, I'm going to give you one to try on your own. So what are our two equations? No, 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 the equations to start with. Right, one half x plus two equals negative five. Ooh, it's getting a little crowded. So we should always have two equations when we're solving absolute value, okay? So what happens, I subtract two, I get 1 half x equals 3 and you get 1 times by 2 multiplied by the reciprocal, and I get x equals 6. Oh. And subtract 2, and I get 1 half x equals negative 7 times by the reciprocal of 2, and x equals negative 14. All right, is that what you got? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what happens when we have stuff going on outside the absolute value as well? What do you think we have to do? No, 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 no distributive property. I cannot distribute into an absolute value. So I have to isolate the absolute value by moving things to the other side. Okay, so what am I going to move first in 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 7? The 7. So let's subtract 7. And we get 2 times the absolute value of x minus 3 equals 8. Oh, and then you move the 2. Now I divide by 2. So I get the absolute value of x minus 3 equals 4. Now is the point when I can write my two equations. The absolute value must be isolated by itself on one side of the equal sign before you write your two equations. And what are my two equations? Negative 4 and 4. <coughs> X minus 3 equals <coughs> X minus 3 equals 4. And X minus 3 equals negative 4. You can add 3. And I get x equals 7 or negative 1. Okay, so let's look at number 2. What's different from number two the, than the other ones? The answer is a variable. Yeah, it's a variable. We have a variable on this side of the equal sign, okay? So I still have to get the absolute value by itself. How am I going to do that? Plus the, can't you add the or can't you combine? I can't combine like terms because the, the k plus 10 is inside the absolute value. So I'm going to add 4, and I get the absolute value of k plus 10 equals 2k plus 3. Okay. Now, the previous problem, whatever was inside, could equal 
the positive of what it was equal to, right? So we can write this equation, k plus 10 equals 2k plus 3. And now you can add like 3. Then I can get my variables on the same side. Or what's my other equation? Negative. k plus 10 could equal the opposite of 2k oops, plus 3. Let me make that look pretty. 2k plus 3. If that 2k plus 3 was a 4, we would just write positive 4 and negative 4, right? Yeah. So we're just going to write positive 2k plus 3 and negative 2k plus 3, but that has to be in parentheses because that negative needs to distribute. So that's negative 2k minus 3 equals k plus 10. So take a second. All right, so when we solve the first equation, we, oops, got a pen here, minus k, right? I have a tendency to always keep my k positive if possible. So you'll always see me move k in a way that will keep, or the variable, to keep it positive. Uh, so I get 10 equals k plus 3. So k equals 7. Is that what you got? All right, and then I'm going to add 2k on this one. So I get 3k plus 10 equals negative 3. So 3k, you following where I'm working here, equals negative 13. No. Got to get k by itself. Divide by 3. So k equals negative 13 thirds. Let me circle it over here. So you can see my oh, hold on. scribbles in the corner. That's Where? We need to have a, a separate conversation here because when we have an equation that has an absolute value equal to the variables, we get what's called an extraneous solution sometimes. An extraneous solution is one we get when we solve it, but when we plug it back in, it doesn't work. Okay, so I'm going to erase some of this to give us some space. And let's look at our equation again. Okay, our original equation says the absolute value of k plus 10 minus 4 equals 2k minus 1. Now, I don't want to evaluate my extraneous solution until the variables or the absolute values by itself, so I really want to look at this one, the 2k plus 3. If I plug in 7, if I plug in the 7, does this side stay positive? Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. And an absolute value is allowed to equal a positive, right? Mm -hmm. But if I plug in negative 13 thirds, which let's make that into a decimal so we can make some sense out of it. 13 thirds is 4 and 1 third, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. If I plugged in negative 4 and 1 third right here, would this side be positive? No. No. Right? Because now it's going to be 8 and 2 thirds negative plus 3 is still going to be negative. You guys see that? Yes. You have to check for extraneous solutions when there's a variable on the other side. So we can see here that this is going to give us a negative number and the absolute value cannot equal a negative. So we get that extraneous solution and 13 thirds is not a solution. And when, you, when you're showing your work, we want to see you solve them both, check them, and cross out the one that doesn't work. Okay? So extraneous Not always. Because if this 2 were negative, then it would work, wouldn't it? And the, ne the positive answer wouldn't work. 
Does that make sense? So it's not always a negative solution. We have to check. Okay? Yes. Only, no, no, no. Everyone we do when there's a variable on the other side. So notice we didn't check over here because there's only one variable, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay? So let's look at number three. The absolute value of y over 5 plus 8 minus 3 equals negative 3. Give this one a try. So if I add 3, because I have to isolate, okay, I have to isolate my variables first. The absolute value of y over 5 plus 8 equals 0. There is no such thing as negative 0, so I don't have to write a second equation, right? y over 5 plus 8 equals 0, minus 8 from both sides. y divided by 5 equals negative 8 times by 5, and y is negative 40. Let's look at the last problem. What should I do first? 9 plus the absolute value of x plus 8 equals 4. Divide by 9. Minus the 9. Okay. There's a plus there, so it's not being multiplied. Absolute value of x plus 8 equals negative 5. What do you think? Then you make two equations. Do I need to make two equations? Yeah. Why? Because there's a negative 5. Positive. Oh, there's right, a no, negative 5, no, though. No, it's a, it's a uh, undefined. No solution. There's no, no solution. solution. Yeah. Can the absolute value ever equal a negative? Nope. No. No. So when we give you these problems, they're a gift. They're a gift on a test for you to just write, hey, thank you, no solution, right? So, Look at the car pack. So, <laughs> so, it can be a negative if it's on the other side, but there's just a negative number there. Right. 